Okay. Hey guys, it's Bin of Trash here. I thought I'd do another um, another tutorial. I've been asking people what they were after, and a few people asked me for anatomy. So I thought I'd do an anatomy themed ish tutorial. Instead of doing one based on just human anatomy, I had thought of doing one on stylized. So stylized anatomy means that no matter what style you draw in, you pretty much can fix anatomy to fit your style. Um, obviously that there is do's and don'ts, so anatomy is still technically correct in all of these styles. So even though like obviously uh, this one here, my carrot one, his body is too small technically, he wouldn't have a waist or anything like that um, because of just how big he is. So that's a chibi style, but it still does have technically a perfect anatomy for that style. The one next to that, this one here, that one is done by my friend called Haru. Um, I'll put her her art link in the description. Um, her name is Haru Kitsu and she does a lot of different styles as well. Specifically I like this one because it's a very simplified anatomy. It still has correct anatomy, but if you can tell from like from like the facial structure etc it's not like your normal human anatomy so again different from your average picture but still technically correct uh, anatomy for it the third picture is again one of my own so the last two um, but it shows again different kinds of anatomy this one is a more I guess correct anatomy it's an an, an enemy styled one but it's got a more humanistic, like, proper human anatomy to it. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Uh, the next one is based off a show called Kerorogunsu, uh, also called Sergeant Frog. It is, again, a slightly different kind of anatomy style. It's It doesn't technically work for, you know, like, obviously the legs aren't long enough, blah blah blah, but it is correct for its style. Same with the last one, which are two chibis, uh, like young boys. Their anatomy is not perfect. Obviously it's like missing bits that you'd normally have, but it's stylized, so it is technically perfect anatomy for that style. So pretty much with whenever you're trying to stylize your anatomy, you can do it really simple. Um, a lot of my cartoon stuff, obviously, I don't have the normal face, like for a normal human face, you actually have more of along this kind of shape pretty much for a, a normal human face whereas for a lot of my pictures I actually don't but I still have basics for it so long as you have the cheeks you can have your chin you have your eyes along with your eyebrows your nose so you still have all this and it still will follow perfect anatomy the only thing that you need to keep is the eyes you need to be perfectly apart if it's three quarter view, obviously, it will move about so one will be smaller than the other, but it is still technically perfect anatomy. It's just that the angle has changed, so you have to just help that. Uh, the cheek. So we have cheeks. Obviously, your chin's going to be down here, so you can have your mouth in it. You can attach your chin or whatever if you want to, or you can leave it flat. There's still technically a chin there, but, you know, it doesn't have to be specifically styled. Mine, normally the neck, this neck is too thin. You wouldn't normally be able to support your own neck with this style, or your own head I should say, but it is enough to get the point across. So again, technically it's perfect anatomy for this style. So you have an ear, because yes you are still going to have ears, and you are still going to have pupils. You can change your eye style, obviously that's up to you. So currently that is my style. You also still have a hairline, it does depends where you would like to put it, some people will put it way up further, some people put it down further, but this is technically still perfect anatomy. So you can add whatever hairstyle you want to it depending on the style you're going for, this is just really messy. Okay, next up we have the torso, now this is a male, so we have to obviously specify that with some anatomy. Now you can do it in a couple of ways. Normally, obviously, with a female anatomy, you would have more curves because the female body does have more curves in it than the male body. The male body generally doesn't really have much of a waist. It's normally a lot more smooth than a female body is. 
So for this, we can still have them, you know, moved about a little bit because you're going to have a bit of a bend when you have your body move one way from another. But he's going to have, it's going to be flat there and you're still going to have to have shoulders. So it's up to you where you want your shoulders. I'm not particularly too happy with this, so I might change it a bit. So here we go, we've got our shoulders. That means now we can put our arms. Now, with this this goes with every body, generally speaking. When you have your your body, if you put your arms straight down, your elbow always reaches your waist. So this goes for every style. That means that your elbow is going to hit about here, which means it can't go further than that. So if I want that, it's going to again be the same thing. He's going to have a shoulder, he's going to have his arm, he's going to have an elbow, all the joints because otherwise he can't move. If he can't move then obviously it's just not going to look right. It's up to you again what you want to do with it because you can simplify it. It all has to have the basics but it doesn't have to be as refined um, to get the point across. Which is what this one here explained. Because if you notice they don't have the shape in the legs, it's pretty much just a straight line. Uh, there's no crease for his legs either and there's not really much separation and even the arms they're not completely bent but they're curved enough where you can tell just how his arm is moving. It's an easy way to get it but again the anatomy looks correct. So this is a few different ways you can do that. If you're looking for like really specific anatomy that goes more towards what the human body looks like I would suggest a site called Pose Maniacs. Um, what it, what this site is for is it shows you all the muscle structure of the human body for both male and female and it shows you a variety of poses so what happens is you can see a 3D pose with the muscle structure and you can move it about and you can actually see how the muscles move with specific actions that the body takes so understanding how the body works actually helps you understand how to draw it for instance, um, if I don't realise, you know, obviously that there are ball joints here where the shoulder hits, that's why you can move your arm so far around, because there's a ball joint. Uh, there is a hinge joint here. A hinge joint means you can only move it one way. So for a hinge joint, this would only be able to move up and down. Because you can't move your you can't move your arm all the way out unless your shoulder has moved. So it's the ball joint that actually makes your arm move different in different directions. You also have another ball joint on your wrist. So that's why you can move your hand about in a bit more ways than you can with your um, where your elbow is. You've got the same kind of thing where your thighs are. So you've got, this is where the butt goes, yes I'm aware. So this is pretty much, there's a ball joint here your thighs are. It's pretty much just what helps you move your legs around. Um, and then you've got... Technically, it's a hinge joint here. So you can only move your leg two ways. So it can only go up and down, pretty much. Same with your... Again, same with your arm. It can only go one way. Um, and then you've got another ball joint on your foot. So that's why your foot can move in different directions. So it's again, it's it's just basics. As soon as you understand how the body works, it's a lot easier to draw it. Which is why I think recently I've come to learn how it, how easy it is to draw bodies than it used to be for me. Because now I understand how everything works. So the same goes for the females as well. So you can draw whatever shape head you want. You can have it basic, you can have it not. Um, you can have your neck. What I normally do is I use guidelines. So for the chest, I generally have this kind of shape. It's a lot easier to use. Um, obviously, if you've got a woman, she's going to have... It's easy just to draw, draw two round bits on here. And then she's going to have this kind of shape. This is her waist. Where her chest is, this is going to be where the rib cage is. That's why it is bigger. The waist, generally all it has is the stomach, so depending on the size of the character you want, this would not be as thin, obviously, if they are a little bit bigger. So if they eat more, you can make it a bit wider. 
stuff like that. For mine, I guess I always draw skinny people, but that's that's just because I tend to forget. Otherwise, I guess on average I will draw different um, different size, but most of my characters, I guess, aren't normally um, very big. Okay, so now what we go is we've got this piece here. This starts to come out because this is where your butt starts. So this is the thighs, hips, blah blah blah. So again, what I normally do with this is there's a joint here and a joint here. And this allows us to put the legs on. So you can have your legs move about however you want. This is a knee joint, so obviously I'm going to put I can put it down here always do guidelines. I find they're a lot easier to, to work with. It's easier to work with a guideline than just try and draw it straight off. I mean if you get better at it, it's, it's easier. Also if something doesn't look quite right, this is where digital art is handy. If it doesn't look right, move it. Because it looked too short for me. So what happens? Just move it up. That looks better. So there we go. Then we can just fill this in, so it's going to come back probably about here. The leg, uh, the reason that most people draw legs so that you have the knee here, most people will draw it like this because there is muscles in here. When you walk, those muscles obviously will get bigger, etc. That's why toned muscles generally have like the creases and stuff in them, because that muscle has built and grown. So if you're trying to draw like a muscular man, if you can see where all the muscles generally are, you can tell which ones would be bigger and which ones would be more defined when you actually draw it. So that's really helpful to learn and it's, it's a lot easier as well. So for the moment we have this basic down. So generally just basic shapes, knowing where all of the joints are. Um, always check your references if you can't figure it out. It's a lot easier, like I find this is easy because I don't have to always look at references, I know the basics enough. Um, for something along the lines of, uh, we'll say Kerodo, his is very simple. So, big round head, his body is going to be pretty much, it's this shape, kind of like a bean. Uh, with this, he had the knee joint here and then the leg and the foot, the foot was down here. This one again, the foot here, the knee would technically be about here. Here's the tail which we can put on and it'll be the elbow about here and for the hand you can split it up into multiple shapes. So that's where all the fingers would be and there's the thumb and you can do the same thing here. So there's the hand, there's the fingers and there's the thumb. So this is pretty much the basics and in terms of his face it's there. So this is the basic guideline I would use for him. His stomach would be here, this is where his chest, his ribcage, his heart would be. So you've got your basics, that's why it's simplified but it's still all there. He's got, technically he doesn't have a neck, it's just not the style for this one. But he does still have shoulders and he does still have the rest of the joints. So technically that's why this one is still correct. Um, with these, again, it's the same kind of thing. They do still have a neck even though there's a scarf there. So it's just a very, very basic um, boy outfit. So it's pretty much, uh, for the pose, it's pretty much just a couple of squares down. Uh, and then there's the knee that comes out like that. And then there's another knee, it's closer to the camera, which I will explain perspective another day. But it's bigger, because it's towards you. And then you've just got, you've got your shoulder, so another one here, another one at the, the waist, another one here, and this one comes off the tree. So again, you've got all of your parts for basic anatomy. So you've still got all your joints and everything. The only thing that's different is it's stylized to fit this particular style of character. 
because obviously drawing it this way it would have a lot more to it you'd still have the basic guidelines actually for this it's just that it'd be more refined like for a normal male body their shoulders tend to be quite a lot more broad so you can have broader shoulders you know with your, your man and then you can have all of your basic stuff here so again this can come here you can have some bit of muscles so I'm not very good at arms I find I'm just not that fantastic but you learn to get used to it I guess this is also very quick and really badly drawn okay so there's a basic one for it again the waist so it hits there you have the upper chest now this is technically where the heart and the rib cage would be here that's why you normally have a piece underneath there for the males and it comes down because your skin is normally like sitting on your rib cage so uh, then what you have is you can also have a piece up here for the neck because there are actually muscles there and if you do grow them enough they actually pop out quite a bit but in a normal case they do still actually sit out a little bit okay so and then you've got this is where the stomach would be so if there's not really much stomach and a bit of um, muscle workout you will actually get abs so that's why those are normally drawn and then from there you've got your lower body which again for the males you don't normally have um, the same figure so they have an hourglass figure for a woman because obviously with the chest it's that's just how it looks so but with the males you can actually do it so this kind of shape pretty much would work just fine looks amazing but yes basic shapes pretty much is the key to building anything so that's your basics on like male anatomy you can have uh, you can have him moving so yeah that's pretty much pretty much that Alright, so going into, that's pretty much, I guess, the basics for, um, <coughs> sorry, that's pretty much the basics for your average thing, as long as you got, like, the simple things there, so, obviously, everybody has a build, it's going to need, um, to be able to house, you know, like, your, your heart and stuff like that, but, there can be, like, it's the same with doing an alien sort of thing, so, say I wanted, just gonna do a random shape okay it kind of looks like an octopus we'll just give him some kind of like feather up the top thing you can have gills why not okay so say we've got this kind of thing this is this here is our alien. Yes, I know it looks ridiculous, but pretty much the simple the same thing applies. One, the legs need to be the same kind of length. So obviously, if one leg looks too small compared to the other, like you wouldn't be able to have, um, you wouldn't be able to have it with one really long leg and like the rest are all like different sizes. because it just doesn't look anatomically correct. So that's why you try and keep them all the same size. The same goes for normal people. Obviously you want the legs to be the same size, you want them to be the same width, you want them to be everything like that. You need it to be able to house um, all your heart and your organs and whatnot. So like for this one, yeah sure I can have the brain up here. Uh, I might decide I want it, its heart down the bottom. So I might want its heart somewhere in, in here. I can have its stomach like right next to the mouth why not but everything obviously has to have its place and it has to be able to fit its place so that's why you have like your big muscly men and that like that it's obviously they have to house those big muscles so that's why you have the defining features on the arms and stuff like that because it's got to house that so the skin is wrapping around all of what's already on your body so taking a look at how the body works and stuff is going to be the best, best way of learning how to draw it. Um, 
So it's the same with, and once you've learned how to, like, the anatomy works, you can draw any pose. So, you know, like, obviously, this is the pose I have here. I don't want to draw him like that. I want to draw him doing something stupid. So why not? But he's still got the same body size, so the top is smaller. The bottom is a bit bigger. Because that's what it is here. This has got a smaller top than he does bottom. The bottom is a bigger piece. So, smaller top bigger bottom and I want him legs apart so both legs he's got his foot I want this one apart I want his foot he's still got he's pretty much still got no crotch but you know so it's just it's just flat across there normally I don't detail anything for any of my chibis and stuff like that anyway um because he's a alien frog this guy Okay, so we've got our arms. If you look at his arms, they still... The, here's the waist. So here's your waist. Which means that the arms are going to stick about here. But, in the occasion that you can't actually fit... So like, if I want to do... I want to do the pose where his arm is actually up past his head. Obviously it's not going to fit if it goes normal size. Because his arms don't normally reach down that low. But for this I can, just to get the, the pose across. Now the anatomy is not quite correct, but it looks correct in a sense. So it's okay if you need to, like generally need to fix it. And I can do that only really with this kind of thing because obviously anatomy on this kind of um, character isn't as important as it is for like this kind of style where you're really trying to get a humanistic kind of style for it. This one's just more derpy so and I already know what he wanted so that's there. There's his shoulders, there's his legs and his knees. His knees aren't really bending at all so it's fine. His elbow, his elbows weren't bending either. The shoulder, obviously the arm has to connect from um, just over the shoulder. It's always good to have a look at your own body, obviously, if you're a little confused with something and just strike a pose and take a photo. Okay, and then for this, this is just his clothes. You can play with that and just have it, like, derpy for fun. So yes, that's just a, a basic idea. So once you've learned anatomy, you can do any kind of pose you want because there's no limitations. You know how the body works. You can successfully, I guess, do it however you want, and it doesn't matter. Um, again, if something looks, if something looks off, then you can just move it about, which is great. Here we go. That's much better. So again, you just gotta set a specific anatomy. So like obviously if I'm going to, if I put his, his other leg like here, it doesn't look at all anatomically correct. So you can still get anatomy wrong even with a set anatomy like this one. So that's something to always watch for. So you can't use the excuse, well that's my style because sometimes there's, there's a difference between style and just drawing something incorrectly. And that's why it's important to understand how something works <coughs> before you start drawing it. So I had to recently understand uh, robotics. So you know like you've got your whole mechanical stuff and it's important to understand why it looks the way it does and it's generally because it can't function if you were to change it to any other way. So uh, that's pretty much it I think for basics on stylized anatomy. Uh, maybe one day I could probably go back into this, uh, do one more for picking poses, but for now this one seems uh, decent enough. While I'm here though, I will do just a quick, quick hand tutorial. So normally you get about the half, this is the palm of your hand. Again, works the same way. You've got your thumb, so your thumb is on a bit more of a ball joint, you can move it all over the place. You can move all your fingers quite quite nicely that's why you've got knuckles so your fingers just look at them spread them apart <laughs> these are kind of derpy but 
that's because I'm like rushing. Yeah, that's a really bad example. Excuse my bad example. Yeah, normally uh, thumb, when you stick your thumb out, it actually bends quite a bit. But again, you're going to have the, the different kind of notches in it for when it bends. And then you've got your other fingers. So to be honest, it's always fun. You can play around with your fingers. Your fingers do have joints in them, so obviously that is a factor. It's also up to you to figure out which ones are longer. The middle finger is generally a bit longer than the other ones. Uh, this one's actually shorter than both this one and this one for girls. I'm not sure, I think it might differ for boys, I'm not sure. I have to actually look into that one day. Uh, generally you don't notice when you draw it, but you know, it's always a first. And that's all stuck on this part because it's a wrist. So this is a really, 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 really quick one and I'm sorry. So. Again, you've got your parts where the fingers bend, and that's pretty much the basics basics for a hand. So it's up to you to figure out how to move it. Always check your own hand, because it's a lot easier, or I find it's a lot easier to check my own hand while I'm drawing. I just use the hand I'm not drawing with. Okay, so I hope this helped. Um, I'm sorry if it was utterly useless. I'm not normally, like, I don't normally do like a lot of teaching stuff, but... Yeah, so I'll leave the links in the description for Haru, the artist, for this cute little picture. And I will also leave the link for Pose Maniacs. Um, I will warn you now, obviously because it is person based on muscles, I would suggest you not look at it if you are very young without your parents' permission. Um, but yes, otherwise it's, uh, it's a good site to learn. Um, full anatomy and stuff like that and you can also take gesture poses which I would suggest because um, it does it changes the pose per minute which is what I used to do um, and I would suggest taking that so you just get the idea of quickly jotting down the big shapes to get the idea of the pose down rather than um, like worrying about the tiny details so that's that's one thing to always look for is just focus on the quick getting like the quick anatomy down instead of worrying about you know like all the details so if I want something like this I just get the pose down quickly and then I can do it later so there we go because then you've got all the time in the world to get on it afterwards without having any kind of issues later on where you have to worry about it so anyway thank you for listening um and i shall see you all next time so bye